now I'd like to introduce Megan Garvey. She supports Balgren Martin's consumer practice with a background spanning traditional public relations to social media and to experiential and nonprofit marketing across the food and beverage, retail, consumer packaged goods, startup, nonprofit, and B2B industries. With a knack for partnering and connecting and a passion for storytelling, Megan has worked with small to mid-sized agencies to help shape the narrative for brands like McDonald's, Gorilla, Olive Garden, White Wave Foods, ConAgra Foods, United Airlines, and the Home Depot. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Megan. Welcome, Megan. Great. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for, for having me here today. It's nice to have an excuse to get a little gussied up for people today. Um, I know this is a, a really hot topic for, for much of the world right now, and I know it seems almost counterintuitive to be talking about planning for a crisis when you are smack dab in the middle of one. Um, but now is really the time to talk about how you can prepare for the next one, even though this one seems like the ship has sailed a bit. Um, first, I just I wanted to briefly introduce myself, Steve. Thank you for that intro. I am a vice president at Falgren. Um, we're an integrated marketing communications firm uh, headquartered in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, we've got locations all over the Midwest and then Denver, Boise, New York, kind of all over the place. Um, I'm not a huge fan of stuffy corporate bios, so I thought I would include a few things about myself to make me seem a little bit less like uh, just a talking head, but um, I'm a proud graduate of Miami University, go Red Hawks. Um, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. It's where I've chosen to, to set my roots with my family, my two-year-old daughter, Lily, who you can see down there. Um, when I am not helping clients uh, with this type of work, I am a huge bibliophile. I read 135 books last year, which is pretty crazy, but I thought uh, this audience in particular would appreciate that. Um, I'm a huge traveler. I've traveled all over the world, um, try to find a little bit of Zen with yoga, and I'm a, a total news junkie, which is helpful for this particular position that I'm in. So um, today we'll discuss uh, a lot. We're going to try to get through a lot during our time together. Um, but because you know the business of navigating a crisis is really nuanced, it's so dependent on the situation that you find yourself in. So I've tried to actually keep this pretty high level, pretty top line. Um, but in a nutshell, today we're going to talk about you know what is a crisis, um, you know, the, the importance of planning before a crisis hits. Um, what that plan looks like, what components make up a crisis plan, and then some uh, media relations tips. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Um, so, okay, so we're just gonna dive right in. Um, you know, the world today is wholly different than it was even just a month ago. This is a photo here from a barren Times Square, which, you know, who would have thought that most, one of the most populous tourist attractions in the world would truly resemble a ghost town. Um, and that seemed to happen really overnight. So I think we all saw coronavirus coming in, in various forms through our government and health officials, but to various, you know, due to various factors, um, it wasn't really apparent how truly devastating the impact would be. Um, and the reality of that devastation really seemed to hit us, like I said, seemingly overnight. So. You all know this intimately. Um, you know the scope of the impact that this has had on the way you do business. Um, could you have seen it coming? Probably not. Um, you know, given how quickly this happened, most businesses were left unprepared on how to navigate. You know, I'll be honest, um, we had zero clients who had scenario planned around a global pandemic as a potential crisis. So if you felt like you were left unprepared, you are far from being alone. Um, but, you know, now that we're through what is really the worst of it in terms of the shock and awe, um, you know, and the dust is starting to settle in, in to the point where we can somewhat anticipate what tomorrow will look like, um, you know, now is the time to, to, to pause, to breathe, to take a look at whether or not you feel like you can be prepared for the next crisis that comes down the road. So don't know what that is. That's totally okay. Um, you know, a crisis can take 
many different forms. Um, sometimes something may be more of an issue than a crisis. Um, that's, that's totally subjective, but a crisis is typically something that has the ability to significantly impact your revenue or your brand reputation. So I've listed a few here um, that are potential crises, you know, some that might be particularly relevant to all of you. So certainly the global pandemic that we find ourselves in the middle of, um, you know, for, from your perspective and experience, whether you know it might be a crash of a critical in-store system, cybersecurity attack, um, the school could be in lockdown due to various security reasons, but maybe some things that you may not have thought about that could be a potential crisis, you know, everything from a financial scandal to sexual harassment, age discrimination, um, uh, you know, a data breach of some kind. There are so many different different things that have the potential to impo impact your flow of revenue and um, damage your business. Um, you know, despite how many things could, could impact your business, um, you may be surprised to know that nearly half of U.S. companies don't actually have a crisis communications plan in place. You know, I know I, I have a few clients that um, believe that well, you know, nothing that debilitating could happen to me. Um, and if it does, I'll just handle it on the fly. And, you know, I think there's some, there's some reason to that. Um, you know, like I said, a crisis is so nuanced that it, really until you're in the middle of it, it's hard to know exactly what to do, but um, there are ways to, to get ahead of that and to think about and sort of train your brain to prepare for a crisis, even before you know what that crisis could be. So, you know, I like to tell clients, think of a crisis plan, see if you wanna go back real quick, um, think of a crisis plan as a, a must have insurance policy against something that could, you know, at best be an annoyance, um, for your brand, but at worst, really have the potential to, to sink your business. So um, it's that extra layer of protection that could never hurt your business. So, so why not have it? Um, plus, you know, no one is immune to a crisis gone awry. You know, between the speed of social media um, and what has unfortunately become a terrible habit of media outlets prioritizing speed over accuracy, um, if you don't get out and own your story, somebody else will. So if you wanna to flip to the next slide. Um, so now I wanna uh, talk you through how you can really start to think about building a crisis plan. Um, we'll talk about a crisis task force, a vulnerability audit, um, communications tools, and then an activation plan. It's a lot of information, so um, we will send this as a follow-up afterwards, so don't feel like you have to take um, tons of notes. But, um, so first we'll start with a crisis task force. So, you know, given how quickly a crisis can happen, um, it's important that you have a pre-selected group of people who you can really mobilize in an in instant. So, um, these are typically representatives from, you know, every piece of the business that could ultimately be impacted. Steve, if you want to go to the next slide, thank you. Um, you know, whether that's senior management, whether that's store operations, supply chain, HR, it, it really doesn't matter what the crisis is at this point. This team should be able to mobilize in any situation. Um, so it's really important that it be representative of lots of internal um, stakeholders. So um, this seems like a really obvious thing to do, but once you have that team in place, you need to build a robust contact list. Again, seems super obvious, but um, we're talking a list of you know, every single way to contact the people on this team and bearing that having backup contacts. So, um, you know, we've had clients that have been left completely unprepared because they couldn't get in touch with X, Y, and Z person and their plan completely fell apart. So this contact list becomes especially critical in the situation of an issue or a crisis. Um, next, it's important that you have some sort of phone tree or communications triage plan in place once you are aware that a crisis is in motion. So if X happens, who is the first person that needs to be notified? So in the case of a security issue, it may be, um, you know, store operations. If it's a situation dealing with sexual harassment or age discrimination, it could be HR and legal. Um, we know your teams aren't always huge, so you might be the person who, you know, the buck always stops with you, but it's always important to know um, in any situation that you can anticipate who is the first person that needs to be aware of that. Um, you'll also want to just make sure that any external media or external spokespersons, people rather, 
or media trained before a crisis hit. So, um, you know, some of you may have been media trained, um, maybe not, but media training can be fairly general, just how you get comfortable with talking to media, what does that look like, um, or super specific to a, a, a certain situation or, or, or subject. So how are you navigating this particular situation? Um, you may need to do a higher level training before and, you know, a more specific one during. That's, you know, that's totally possible possible. Um, it's also time to make sure that, you know, once you're ready to activate a plan, and we'll get into that a little bit later, um, that you can quickly disseminate information. So that means that um, you need to make sure that you have a super robust and up-to-date media list, um, a list of all of your business partners. So for example, if something happens to the store and you need to pause your marketing campaign for any reason, um, you need to have your promotional partner on speed dial so you can say, hey, take that ad down, stop that TV spot, whatever the case may be. But it's all of these different partners that have the potential to, um, to impact uh, your work. And then finally here as part of the crisis task force, um, it's important to make sure that you have a password protected list of all of the passwords and social handles that are associated with your business. So if you have someone who regularly posts for you on social media, but for whatever reason, they're unable to support you during a crisis, it's important that other people have um, access in a pinch. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, um, so now is where the actual planning comes in. And, and, and again, I don't think anyone could have scenario planned around a global pandemic, but there are enough situations that you could anticipate um, that you could really start to think about and plan around. So the vulnerability audit is really a critical piece of the planning process. Um, you're forcing yourself to really think about anything that could possibly go wrong. You know, there will be things that fall outside of that. You know, you will have, you could, you could plan as many scenarios as possible and inevitably there will be something that happens that you didn't plan for but um, you all know your businesses well um, this this exercise is something that you can probably do in your sleep so you can even take the list that I shared on slide five at the start are those things that you can start to think about you know if this happened how would this impact our business um, so going to the next slide, as you outline, you know, the varying vulnerabilities to your business, these are just some questions that you may want to think about. So in the scenario of a global pandemic, what could happen? You would have to close your retail locations. Okay, what is the first action that you would theoretically have to do? Okay, you would have to find a way to take your content and move it online. Um, you know, what is your source of information? Are you relying on a local blogger who is reporting on hearsay? Are you tapped into your local health department and government officials? Um, where would you go for information in the situation of this particular scenario? Um, Next, it's important to think about, you know, what is your role um, as, as the store? Are you, are you really the lead here? Are you a supporting player? Um, you know, certainly this had a huge impact on your business, but um, you may just be a, a supporting role for uh, a different crisis down the road. Um, and then finally, as you think about your vulnerabilities, you'll want to think about your uh, recovery time. So how much time is it going to take for you to recover lost revenue, um, to manage your uh, employees, to, you know, move the content from, um, you know, online, start to think about how much time you would need to take certain actions. So next going into communications tools, um, you know, a lot of times the elements in here that I'm talking about are things that you really won't be able to finalize until you're really in the middle of a crisis. But, um, you know, it's helpful to understand what you would need to likely prepare for um, so you can start to have that at the ready. So the first step here is really knowing your audiences. Um, you know, in a time of crisis, you have to think about who are all of the different internal and external stakeholders you may need to communicate with. So that could be shareholders, that's employees, um, customers, student body. Do you know how to reach them? So in this quote unquote downtime, um, this might be a great time to think about, you know, if you have a CRM database, dusting it off, make sure that it's updated. If not, putting one in place so that you can have easy access to your customer base so that in the event of the next crisis, you're able to very quickly disseminate information and say, here's what happened. Here's the action that we're taking. Here's how we're here to support you. Um, next, you want to start to develop your messaging. Sorry if you're 
hearing a dog in the background. Um, it's important that uh, this messaging is really customized per audience. So what you say to employees will be very different than what you say to your customers or to your suppliers. Um, you know, your messaging here should really address what you know about a situation, um, the actions that you're taking. Um, and if you're not the lead in the story or the situation, it could talk about what you're doing to support those who are. So from here, um, and this really comes in once a crisis actually hits, you'll use the approved messaging that you've developed um, to really develop everything from holding statements to customer service FAQs to media material, social media posts. That messaging framework is really your anchor for everything. No, nothing that you do should stray away from sort of that, that broader messaging platform. Um, and finally, a critical part of the commu communications plan is really timing and, and consistency. So, um, for example, if you if there is a situation that is particularly impacting your store, and it's a it's a much larger story to tell, you may want to consider putting up a blog post. Um, but before you post on social media, driving to that blog post, you need to make sure the blog post is live, so it's a seamless customer experience. Um, or if you've promised an exclusive to a media outlet, you'll just want to make sure that nothing on your end goes live until their story does. So it's just a lot of cadence um, uh, timing to, to consider. So now I want to show you um, an example of a scenario plan, and we'll follow up with this as a PDF because I do think it's a really helpful tool. Um, this is really just a kind of a double click from the vulnerability audit, but it's informed specifically by the messaging exercise that you will have just gone through. So, you know, once you're in a crisis, this is a really helpful tool to capture all of the different scenarios that are playing out and what you're doing to address specifically. So as an example, um, you know, we understand that as a result of coronavirus, many or, or most of you have had to lay off you know, most of your student staff who were, were relying on you for income. Um, so in this exercise, the, the scenario would be, you know, the, the layoffs of the students. Um, who is impacted, in this case, the students, but also, you know, potentially customers. Are you seeing uh, that impacts the customer experience in any way? Um, what action are you taking? So using an example that, that we heard yesterday, um, are you lending uh, the staff out to other departments across campus who needed them? Are you helping them through unemployment? Are you activating other benefits to help compensate? So once you know what the situation is, what are you doing to actually act on it? Um, and then next, what is your message to those employees? You know, what would your message be to shareholders, to your customers, to media, um, which, we'll, which we'll get into um, in a little bit. But this format, I think, helps you ensure that you're really pulling key message themes across a really visual way to make sure that your messaging, messaging is consistent, even if it's very specifically tailored to different audiences. Um, I mentioned media. So if you want to go to the next slide, um, what I've included here is a sample holding statement. And a holding statement is simply um, a statement that you, um, that you can keep and kind of adapt as the situation evolves, but it's just a, it's a place to start from. Um, brevity is really key. So there, there's really three core components here. Um, what you know about a situation, what you're doing, and then finding a way to really express compassion and concern, no matter what the situation is. So typically, if something has been classified as a crisis, there is a need for concern and compassion, empathy in some, some form. Um, this is, again, this can continue to adapt, but this is a really good starting place as you start to think about your external messaging. So going to the next slide, um, I know I'm packing in a lot, so thanks for, thanks for sticking with me. But um, before we get to media relations tips, I wanna share what is admittedly a little bit of an eye chart on what a final crisis activation plan could look like once you're really in the thick of it. So this is where the rubber finally meets the road. It's when you're officially at the beginning, hopefully at the beginning of a crisis versus the middle. Um, but this is really a step-by-step -step plan to walk you through kind of everything that you need to do in that moment. So the first step um, is really taking stock of the situation. What do you know? 
Um, take that time to pause and to breathe and, and don't be afraid to not act immediately. In fact, we want you to take the time to really make sure that your head is wrapped around the situation. Often there's many different sides to a story. So taking this time now is really critical. Um, where are you getting your information and sources? As I mentioned before, if it's coming from the health department or from um, you know, a student government of some kind, that's probably pretty accurate. If it's coming from a, a, you know, a local blogger, you may just want to dig to make sure that that information and those sources are accurate. Um, uh, once you kind of have a, an understanding of what the issue is, that's when you want to classify the crisis. So um, certainly right now with coronavirus, that has such far-reaching impact across every facet of your business. It's impacting every single person that would have walked through your doors, every single employee. But there could be something that is um, a situation between uh, a manager and employee that is fairly contained. So you'll just want to classify the crisis to, to determine how, what, what team do you engage, what pieces of the task force team do you engage, um, and how quickly you're elevating that, um, that situation. So once you mobilize your task force, it's really important that everyone understands understands their role. So as store manager, what is your role? As HR, what are you being asked to do throughout this entire process? Uh, the worst thing that could happen is that people don't understand their roles, things get messy, things go off the rails, and become out of your control. So really making sure that you make it very clear from the beginning, here's what we need everyone to do to make this super seamless. Um, another step in this process, which, which seems is actually a thing that a lot of people miss and is really critically important, is making sure you have someone who is assigned to document every single thing that you're doing. It's really important to have a paper trail in these situations to say, here's when we were made aware of the situation, here's what we did, here's you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, God forbid any of you get subpoenaed for any you know, particular reason. Um, it's just always good to have a paper trail. So making sure someone is assigned to really document you know, every step of, of, of that process. So um, you know, depending on the classification, then you go into building your messaging and your material. So um, if it is truly an internal situation, Situation. Those materials are really focused on, you know, internal messaging. Um, but but if it's an external, you'll want to think about having the media statement, the press release, this, you know, customer service FAQs, that kind of a thing. Um, you want to make sure that you're making any adjustments to your business. So, you know, we throughout coronavirus, we had to counsel a lot of clients to say, hey, you need to stop this marketing promotion, or hey, you need to pull back on that April Fool's marketing prank because now is not the time. Um, so this is the point, the point in the process where you take a look at everything that you have in the marketplace and say, what is going to make us look really tone deaf if we continue with and what needs to be um, pulled back. Um, from here, ensure your senior management is briefed. They understand what you're doing, what you're saying about what you're doing, who you're reaching, and then just execute the heck out of, heck out of your comments strategy. Um, part of your comm strategy is going to likely be, you know, potentially be media relations, which if you want to slip to the next slide, um, we'll talk through some tips. Um, you know, one of the most intimidating parts of our job always seems to be media relations, and that's understandable. Uh, media are not always the, the kindest, um, but it's typically what we have found the clients who are the least prepared that end up falling on their face. So um, with preparation, this, this is a lot you know, easier than you would uh, believe it to be. So how do you prepare for something like that? Um, the first question that you want to ask is, are you the right person to speak? You know, who should be telling this story? Um, you know, it, it actually may not be you. It could be somebody that you work with. It could be somebody at the university level. Um, you know, is the issue happening at the university level? You know, I use the example of a, a, a school lockdown. It's probably not your um, your time to speak. So really think about um, you know the role that the store plays um, in the situation. But if you are the lucky one here that gets to talk to media, um, the most important thing is to to know your messaging front and back. You know I said said that in the beginning. That's really the foundation for everything that you do. Everything should tie back to that messaging. Um, so know your messaging rehearse in front of the mirror, silly as it may feel to you, um, it's going to help you really navigate those, uh, those media interviews really seamlessly. 
Um, gathering background on the reporter. So I have, uh, when I was first starting out in my career, I had a reporter who was an investigative reporter, but she said she wanted to do a, a story on one of my clients and I didn't do the right background on her. I thought she was just really excited about one of my clients. And she ended up doing a really scathing, terrible story that was fairly debilitating. This is my first year out of the gate. So um, I learned a lot of lessons since then, but it just goes to show that if you don't um, do the background that you need to do on a specific reporter, they may have a, um, a particular angle or beat that is important to understand so you can kind of frame how you'll answer certain questions. Um, practice. So, you know, think about what questions that um, person could potentially ask you and get in front of your mirror and, and practice how you'll answer using your messaging as, um, as a framework. You know, we have a lot of clients who are tempted to say um, no comment. Don't say no comment. That implies um, guilt. It, you know, it implies that you don't want to cooperate with media. At the end of the day, you want to help media tell the right story. Um, so saying no comment tends to, to, to do the opposite. They want to see what's helpful. And if, they're, um, if they have uh, misinformation, help, help correct it. Um, there's no such thing as off the record. So if you're out for drinks with somebody, not in this day and age, obviously, because we're all at home, virtual drinks with somebody who happens to work for um, uh, a media outlet, nothing is truly off the record. They're, they're legally able to report on anything that you say. Um, be honest. Um, you know, I think that the, the brands and, and the businesses that really win during this time are they're transparent, they're honest, they're human, um, you know, they're they're relatable. So it's okay. You don't have to be you don't have to be a robot. I'm, I'm sure none of you are, but um, this is really an okay time for your humility and your humanity um, to come through. And then finally. Be calm, and that leads me to my to my last slide, um, Steve. If you want to flip to that, but um, you know, a crisis can be really scary, and you know, with preparation and with clear, really linear thinking, you can really withstand any storm. I think a lot of our our clients tend to scramble. They make hasty decisions in the moment because they feel like they have to act quickly. You do, but you have to be thoughtful about it. And the first thing to do is really just to, to breathe, um, you know, assess the situation, determine what your role is, activate your plan, communicate clearly, and I promise you will get through it. So that's it. Thanks, Megan. That was, uh, uh, really great to walk through um, the, the steps that that um, that lead uh, uh, to to a, to a good plan. Um, one question: I'm going to get to the chat to see if any questions have come through. But in our last minute or two here, um, what would you say um, if 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 someone weren't able to plan ahead of time, um, but then found themselves in the middle of a crisis? What what what's the first thing to do? Yeah. I Thank you for that. I think, you know, this is all nice, but you're also running a business and you are wearing a lot of different hats. So I recognize that you may not have the, the time to go through all of these exercises, but I think if you were to do, you know, full, maybe there's four things to think about. First is, is really assessing the situation. Do not jump to action until you know everything. Um, you know, like I said, there's often multiple sides of every story. You really have to understand the situation that you find yourself in. Um, from there, it's important that you alert all of your stakeholders. So don't plan in a vacuum. Don't make decisions in a vacuum. You know, really lean on people throughout your organization to help you determine that, that course of action. Um, from there, you know, compiling all of the, the, the necessary internal, external communications and messaging, um, which is something that you can probably quickly do if you have all of your stakeholders together and aligned on a course of action. What flows from that is, is pretty simple. Um, and then finally, act. You know, if it is a, an internal um, situation, communicate with your internal, internal audiences. If it's external, very quickly um, get out in front of that and own your story. Thank you. Um, I'm just trying to get to the gallery view so we can see um, everyone's cameras too. Um, we are just a minute over time. Um, so uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to submit, you can um, um, send them to uh, me, steve.mendez at redshelf.com, and I'll make sure that they get over to Megan. We also have her um, 
email address here and Twitter. Um, thank you, Megan, um, for, for all that information. Um, it, it really is great to walk through a plan planning process uh, for crisis communications like that. Um, and thank you for being um, here for our first morning focus event for Red Shelf Connections. Um, I, I know everyone really appreciates your, your time.